In a previous video, we looked at the JK flip-flop and saw how it works similarly to the SR flip-flop, except that it has this feedback so that if uh, both inputs are one, then on the rising clock, the output toggles rather than going into a sort of undefined state. In this video, I want to uh, actually build this and, and take a look at how this works in practice. So here I've built a JK flip-flop uh, following this, this circuit diagram here. Uh, and I wanted to kind of walk through a couple things. One thing I noticed though when I was building it was I, um, in the diagram here, I got a couple things, or I got one thing wrong, which is that this is actually the K input and this is the J input uh, because J corresponds to setting. So when this goes high, we want to see the Q output go high. Um, and then when this input goes high, then the Q output should go low. So K reset. So I just had that labeled wrong, but otherwise everything is, is fine. So I went ahead and built this and I'm using the uh, 74LS02 for the NOR gates. So on the top side of the chip, I'm using the two NOR gates there. And then this chip over here is the uh, 74LS11, which is a, a triple three input uh, AND gate. So I'm using these two AND gates that have three inputs each um, in, in this, in, for these AND gates here. If I hook up power here, uh, it should go into some state or other. So it looks like this is the Q output that's, that's on. Uh, and then I can also connect my clock over here. And I've got a clock circuit over here. And uh, basically what's going on here is that these two switches are tied to ground through these pull down resistors. And then when you push the button, it goes high. So uh, both of these are connected via these green wires to the two uh, AND gates. So those are the K and the J inputs. Also going into the AND gates is our clock. And so the clock comes in here and it's going through this RC circuit. So there's a capacitor here, which is a 0.001 microfarad capacitor, and then a resistor here, which is a 1000 ohm resistor. And then the output of that goes into these, these two white wires, which go into another input on both of those AND gates. And then the outputs of those AND gates are these uh, uh, blue wires that go to two of the, uh, the inputs on two of the NOR gates over here. Um, the other inputs of those NOR gates come from the outputs, and so those are these two yellow wires here. Um, and then also the outputs of these go back around to the end gates, which are these yellow wires that go back over here to the end gates. Uh, and then also the outputs of these NOR gates go to these two LEDs. So this is our Q, and this is our Q complement. So if we push the K input, uh, if we send that high, then that should reset the latch and Q should go off. And indeed it does. And if we push the J, that should set it and Q should go on. And indeed it does. And you see it goes on with, with the clock. So it's not immediate when I push the button, it, it happens on the next clock signal because this is gated on this uh, clock rising edge. So now because this is a JK flip-flop, if we uh, put both inputs, J and K high, we should see this toggle. And it's not toggling. <laughs> Um, but sometimes it does, and if I hold it at just the right angle or poke at it, oh, there it toggled. Now it's occasionally toggling. Make sure I'm pushing both of these buttons. Yeah, sometimes it toggles. Oh, there it toggled a couple times. And what I'm finding is that this circuit is, is pretty inconsistent. So what I'm going to do is, rather than trying to push those buttons, if I put a little jumper in here across that button, and then another jumper here across this button, that's the same as, uh, you know, inputting a 1 for both J and K. So this should be toggling right now each time the clock rising edge goes. And you see, oh, now it's mm, sometimes toggling. Uh, now it's toggling again. Now it's actually working pretty well. Uh, but it's definitely very inconsistent. Uh, and it turns out there's, there's a good reason why it's behaving inconsistently. Yep, there, it just stopped. And now it started again. Um, there's a very good reason that it's behaving inconsistently. And in order to understand what's going on here, really the only way to really see what's happening is to use an oscilloscope to, to take a look at, at the signals in here. So I'm going to start by just looking at the clock input, just so we have a reference of what that looks like. And so here it is, this is our, our clock. You can see it's going on and off and it looks like it's about twice per second. Uh, each of these divisions here is 100 milliseconds. So over 10 divisions, it's pulsing twice, so twice per second. Um, and the next thing I wanna look at is the output. 
because this is what we want to see uh, toggling, you know, with each clock pulse. You can see our clock is pulsing here again at, you know, uh, twice per second. So each of these pulses we would expect to see, uh, we would expect to see our output toggling. And right now it's not toggling, although, yeah, if I kind of hold my hand at the right place, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of, kind of flaky, but sometimes it toggles. So I'm going to look at the output here and see what that looks like. And here's our output, and it looks like it is actually doing something. Oh, and there you can see it actually toggled, and now it's high, okay. So it is, it, it's kind of inconsistent, and there it toggled again. And so when it is toggling, it's toggling at these uh, clock rising edges, which is what we want. But where it gets interesting is if we zoom in, other way, so if we zoom in and look at that rising edge of the clock, you see there is something going on here. And if we zoom in even more, what you see is pretty interesting, which is when that clock goes high, the output does in fact toggle, but it toggles back and forth a bunch of times before then settling somewhere. And that's actually why this is behaving so inconsistently, is because it is toggling, which is what we want, right when that clock goes high, but it's toggling again shortly thereafter. And if we look at this, you can see the period here is 80, about 84, 82 nanoseconds. So every 82 nanoseconds here, this is toggling on and off. That actually makes some sense if you look back at the uh, circuit diagram here, because what's happening is this pulse is, is coming in and the output is toggling, but as soon as it toggles, that feedback goes back around to the input, um, and it toggles again, at the, you know, because this, this clock pulse, even though we're trying to look at the, the leading edge of the clock, if this uh, pulse, so the clock, of course, is, you know, this is on for uh, 250 milliseconds, this is on for quite some time, um, but this pulse should be just be looking at just that very first instant when it turns on. But if this pulse is too wide, then and the, the output switches before this pulse goes back to zero, then it will switch again, and it'll switch again, and it'll switch again. And this is a phenomenon called racing. And that's exactly what's happening here, is when this pulse goes high, it's switching on, but then it's immediately switching off and on and off and on. And if I can get this where it's toggling, you see Sometimes it does toggle, but it's totally luck of the draw because it switches on and off and on and off and on and off, and then eventually it gets to here and it settles into whichever state it happens to be in. And so sometimes we get kind of lucky, sometimes, uh, and, and it toggles, but not always. And the reason for that is this RC circuit. Now I mentioned before that the capacitor I'm using is a 0.001 microfarad capacitor, and the resistor is a uh, 1000 ohm resistor. And so if you multiply those together, you get the time constant of this RC circuit, which is effectively gives you some indication of the width of this pulse. And in this case, uh, this time constant is going to be, I think it's a 100 microseconds, but we can actually measure it. So let me look at the, at the, the clock or the pulse input here for the circuit and put that here on channel two. And here you see that pulse. And so if we zoom out, it looks great, right? The, you know, this is, this is kind of what we're looking for, right? When the clock goes high, this pulse just quickly pulses. The problem is that that pulse is not, is not quick enough. And so you can see here, oh, it's one microsecond. So one microsecond uh, pulse. And for that one microsecond, we get this on and off and on and off. And then finally that gets back down to this area here where it's considered a zero. Um, and then it finally settles down. So what can we do about this? Well, there's a couple things we can do. One is we can try to make this pulse shorter. Um, so right now this is one microsecond. You know, we saw that uh, if we zoom in here, measuring the period here of, of this on and off, it's, you know, 80 nanoseconds. You know, we can try to get this pulse down. So if we, you know, we can get it to 100 nanoseconds pretty easily if we go from a, a 1,000 ohm resistor to 100 ohm resistor. So let me try to swap that out. This is the resistor here. Oh boy. <laughs> and put the 100 ohm resistor in. 
And so here you see, okay, we have a much smaller pulse, but it's still not quite working. Um, and, you know, we're frankly getting into the limits of, of what we can do on a breadboard. You know, these, uh, this kind of high speed, you know, tens of nanoseconds type, type of stuff, uh, you know, these breadboards really, really aren't made for that. Uh, because, you know, within this, this breadboard, you have all sorts of stray capacitances and, and inductance and all sorts of stuff. And that's why, you know, just me kind of waving my hands over it <laughs> where it was changing the, the behavior of it. In fact, just now you see it went low. Yeah, so now it looks like it's going high, then low, and staying low. But I bet if I stick my hand in just the right place, I can maybe get this to toggle. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not changing anything, I'm just kind of moving my hand around. And it's just because my hand is, is changing the capacitance because I'm grounded and... Uh, yeah, you can see there, it's uh, now it's toggling, uh, but, but now it's stopped toggling. So really, we're, we're getting into... And you can even see, you know, this, this rising edge of our clock is not, you know, on this time scale. It's not a real sharp rising edge. And again, that's just because, you know, the breadboard, there's, there's limits to what we can do. This pulse, we're not detecting a nice clean, or we're, not, we're not generating a nice clean pulse like we were when we had the, the larger resistor in there. And again, it all comes down to, you know, we're, we're really pushing the limits of what we can do on a breadboard. You know, and in general, this, this particular way of detecting the rising edge by using an RC circuit like this is, is pretty fraught in, in a JK flip-flop like this because of this racing condition. You have this, you have this racing where, you know, if, if, this, if this pulse isn't narrow enough um, and it's, you know, it needs to be, you know, just a few nanoseconds really, uh, then the output is gonna feed back in and it's gonna toggle more than once per rising edge of the clock. So what can we do about this? Well, in the next video, I'll show you a much better way to build a JK flip-flop that doesn't have this racing problem at all. And that's something called the master-slave JK flip-flop. It's uh, much more robust, and, and we shouldn't have any problems uh, getting it working on a breadboard.